So now the previous ones are polyclonal antibody, but uh, in many cases, monoclonal antibody will be more useful. So for example, to detect or purify a specific substance, we better to choose a monoclonal antibody. And this become a very important tool in biochemistry, molecular biology, and medicine to prevent, diagnose, and treating of disease. So let me show you um, the, the how to uh, the scheme how to create monoclonal antibody. This is so clever that, and important that it leads to Nobel Prize in 1984. So let's take a look. So the mouse will be challenged with an antigen. You know, it can be a pathogen. And then the spleen contains a lot of B cells, but the B cells is hard to culture for a long time. So his idea is, hey, how about making a B cell cancer called the myeloma cells. The cancer cells will proliferate indefinitely. So how about fuse these two cells together and, and that and, and these fusion ones, you uh, isolate a single cell, which is successfully fused one, then we culture in, in a medium selected for this positive cell then the, it's a kind of cancer cell, so it keeps proliferating. So you can have a lot of the same cell clones, and this will produce exactly the same antibody or monoclonal antibody. And that monoclonal antibody, we write it as an MABs, and this is a monospecific antibodies produced by identical cells because these cells are now clones from the cancer characteristic. So that monoclonal antibody will have exactly the same chemical structure and antigen specificity is exactly the same because the same epitope. And of course then the antigen binding affinity will be also the same. So this kind of fusion of a specific antibody producing B cell with a myeloma cell or B cell cancer, and that idea, those uh, hybrid cells we call as a hybrid, and so OMA means cancer, so it's called hybridoma cells. And like drug names, you can actually recognize which one's monoclonal antibody. Because for example, as I told you multiple times, Herceptin, which is anti or two antibody drug, its name is trastuzumab. And you look at this little final map, it means it's monoclonal antibody uh, treatment drug. Okay, you can watch this YouTube for um, explaining monoclonal antibody. And now I want to discuss about humanized antibody. Because once we create this monoclonal antibody, but this monoclonal antibody, the Y shape will have will be produced in the animal. So it's animal antibody, which means it has a variable region and constant region, and that itself is not present in our human. So once you put it inside the human, we also can develop uh, antibody against this foreign antibody. So, so it may be not easy to use as a drug because it's once inside our circulation, we may attack this antibody cell. So the idea is, can we make, except the variable antigen binding site, the rest of them, can we make it as a human-like or humanized so that it doesn't cause immuno, uh, immune reaction from our body? So, what is humanized antibody, monoclonal antibody? That's antibody from non-human species, which is potentially immunogenic to human, and whose protein sequences have been modified to increase their similarity to antibody variants produced naturally in humans. So this is a, a kind of um, cartoon showing that. So murine, the yellow means uh, murine. So if this one is, inside the human body for clinical use, that can cause a problem. So 
So we create humanized or chimeric antibody. So uh, with monoclonal antibody to administer to human for clinical use, and, and that we call as a Zuma. So remember, I just discussed trans, trastuzumab as, as a Herceptin or anti HER2 humanized antibody because the, there's now you see ZUMAP. So that ZU means humanized. And how do we produce this? Um, we better to see a little more detail is using recombinant DNA technology to create constructs capable of expression in mammalian cell control. So recombinant DNA technology is very, very important. So let's take a look further. So this blue means a mouse and red, uh, this brown means human. So the top row shows us some pure mouse and this is chimeric because that FC region is now replaced into human ones. So that's chimeric. And even uh, this antigen binding sites some part can be replaced as humanized. So this is humanized. And even chimeric humanized is existing, and that's human. So what's, what are the advantages of this chimeric and humanized antibody? Because now we have this one, uh, it will have a good biological activity of the binding. And because this body is humanized, it will reduce immunogenicity. And because of that inside circulation, it will last longer in the circulation. So that means it improves pharmacokinetics because of the prolonged plasma half-life. And these chimeric antibody now as a name, as a, it's for C. So CMAP means it's a chimeric antibody. So one example is called, called Erbitox or anti-EGFR chimeric antibody. EGFR stands for epidermal growth factor receptor. And uh, you see that drug name is cetuximab. Now you read this, or well, MAP is monoclonal antibody, CMAP, the C means chimeric antibody. Okay, so next time we will discuss about vaccines and viral infection and the requirement for effective vaccine development. Uh, thank you for your attention.